Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church to Cuesta, Florida, on this Friday, the 15th of December, 2023. My name is Ian Anderson, and I will be your officiant today. <clears throat> in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let me pause to welcome everybody by name. Good morning, Joan. Good morning, Pam. Good morning, Julie and Pete. And good morning, Wendy. Thank you for joining me this morning for morning prayer. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. Our invitatory psalm this morning is a portion of Psalm 95, Venite Exaltamus Domino. We shall say the Venite together in unison. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm number 31, which we shall say together in unison. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, Lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, of God of truth. I hate those who cling to worthless idols, and I put my trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad because of your mercy, for you have seen my affliction you know my distress. You have not shut me up in the power of the enemy. You have set my feet in an open place. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, 
and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me on the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mine. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness, save me. Lord, let me not be ashamed for having called upon you. Rather, let the wicked be put to shame. Let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be silenced, which speak against the righteous, haughtily, disdainfully, and with contempt. How great is your goodness, O Lord, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have done in the sight of all for those who put their trust in you. You hide them in the covert of your presence from those who slander them. You keep them in your shelter from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me the wonders of his love in a besieged city. Yet I said in my alarm, I have been cut off from the sight of your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the sound of my entreaty when I cried out to you. Love the Lord, all you who worship him. The Lord protects the faithful, but repays to the full those who act haughtily. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So as you know, we have been slogging through the book of the prophet Amos for the past couple of weeks. And now we turn to the prophet Haggai. Uh, Haggai was a prophet who prophesied in the period immediately following the uh, Babylonian exile. And he was the prophet who was principally responsible for having the children of Israel rearrange their priorities, and rebuild the temple of the Lord. So this is from the prophet Haggai, the very opening words of his prophecy. In the second year of King Darius, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Thus says the Lord of hosts, these people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. Then the word of the Lord came by the prophet of Haggai, saying, is it time for you yourselves to live in your paneled houses while this house lies in ruins? Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider how you have fared. You have sown much and harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And you that earn wages, earn wages to put them into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider how you have fared. Go up to the hills, and bring wood and build the house, so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You have looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because my house lies in ruins, while all of you hurry off to your own houses. Therefore, the heavens above you have withheld the Jew and the earth has withheld its produce. And I have called for a drought in the land and the hills, on the grain, the new wine, the oil, on what the soil produces, on human beings and animals, and on all their labors. 
Then Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the word of the Lord their God and the words of the prophet Haggai, as the Lord their God had sent him. And the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the messenger of the Lord, said to the people with the Lord's message, saying, I am with you, says the Lord. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, on the 24th day of the month, in the sixth month. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We respond to the prophecy of the prophet Haggai with a song of praise, which we shall say together in unison. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. For our second reading, we continue from the book of Revelation. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira, write, These are the words of the Son of God, who is sent, who has eyes like a flame of fire, and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your works, your love, faith, service, and patient endurance. I know that your last works are greater than the first. And I have this, but I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet and is teaching and beguiling my servants to practice fornication and to eat food sacrificed to idols. I gave her time to repent, but she refuses to repent of her fornication. Beware, I am throwing her on a bed, and those who commit adultery with her I am throwing into great distress unless they repent of their doings and I will strike her children dead. And all the churches will know that I am the one who searches minds and hearts, and I will give to each of you as your works deserve. But to the rest of you in Thyatira, who do not hold to this teaching, who have not learned what some call the deep things of Satan, to you I say, I do not lay on you any other burden. Only hold fast to what you have until I come. To everyone who conquers and continues to do my works to the end, I will give authority over the nations to rule them with an iron rod, as when clay pots are shattered. Even, even as I received authority from my Father, to the one who conquers, I will also give the morning star. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, those Theoretarians, will they never listen? Good morning, Sherry. Great to see you this morning. We respond to our reading from Revelation with Dignus S, a song to the Lamb, which we shall say together in unison. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. 
and yours by right, O lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect of the Day is the Collect for the second Sunday of Advent. Merciful God, you have sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray to commemorate John Horden, bishop and missionary in my home country of Canada, who died in the year 1893. Creator God, whose hands hold the storehouses of the snow and the gates of the sea, and from whose word springs forth all that is. We bless your holy name for the intrepid witness of your missionary John Horden, who followed your call to serve the Cree and Inuit nations of the North. In all the places we travel, may we, like him, proclaim your good news and draw all into communion with you through your Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Missionary to the Inuit. That sounds like a hard sell to me. A collect for Fridays. Almighty God, whose most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the prayer for this week, a prayer for guidance. O God, by whom the meek are guided in judgment and light rises up in darkness for the godly, grant us in all our doubts and uncertainties the grace to ask what you would have us to do, that in the spirit of wisdom we may may save us from all false choices, and that in your light we may see light, and in your straight path may not stumble. 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world and in every denomination, and particularly those throughout the Anglican Communion, remembering today especially the Diocese of Beni, Congo, whose bishop appointment is still vacant, and the Missionary Diocese of Benin, Nigeria, the Right Reverend Dr. Peter O.J. Emasuan, Bishop. We pray also for our own Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton, and his wife Kate, and the Episcopal Church, the Most Reverend Michael B. Curry, Presiding Bishop and Primate. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not, who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. And I might mention, we said that prayer in unison at uh, Father Groff's uh, institution service. It was interested in me. I was going through my Rolodex in my head and thinking, that is the third of the three prayers for mission that we say, usually on Fridays. We pray for our own parish family and those dear to them, remembering today especially Sean, Howard, Meredith, Paul, Allison, Rob, Scott, Carolyn, Sarah, Wayne, Phil, Mary Ella, the Unger family, Keith, Mary Jean, Catherine, Peter and Mirabel, Bunny, and Elise. We pray also for ministries of current activity, remembering especially Church on the Green, the Good Shepherd's members may worship twice a month in a casual outdoor setting especially appropriate for young families, and our food pantry, that through nourishing the bodies and spirits of our neighbors in need, we may be a beacon of faith, hope, and love in this community. And now, if you wish to, wish to join me, let us say together our Good Shepherd Parish prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, make our parish of Good Shepherd truly a community of prayer and belonging. Raise up in our midst the resources and leadership which will enable us to act upon what you would have us do in this place and in a ministry of love and concern for others. Open my mind and heart to discern what you would have me do through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your own prayers of petition, intercession, and thanksgiving, either shared with all or held in the silence of your hearts. I would like to begin our time of open intercession with giving thanksgiving for a birthday today. Today is Jesse's, uh, Jesse S.'s 31st birthday. Jesse is a faithful leader of our youth group who comes every Wednesday night to set an example for our teenagers and our tweens, as we call them. And uh, I just want to give a shout out to Jesse on this her birthday. Letty informs me it's also the 70th birthday of her friend Karen. So let us pray for both Jesse and Karen. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants Jesse and Karen as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. And Sherry asks our prayers because she's feeling, feeling ill with stomach pain. I'm sorry to hear that, Sherry. I hope it's something just small, just eating something wrong or just a mild thing. So why don't we all pray for Sherry? Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servant, Sherry and give your power of healing to those who minister to her needs, that she may be strengthened in her weakness and have confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today, 
is this, eve this, this evening is the annual holiday reception for the Vestrian staff. And uh, so uh, I will be gathering with uh, the rest of the Vestry and our staff later today to celebrate. And uh, it's, it's a great time because we have a new rector, Father, Father Groff, Sanford's now with us. Uh, and uh, we're having it at Father Derek's home. So we'll get to celebrate all that he did for us during the interim period. And I just like your prayers and thanksgivings for this group of individuals who really had to work hard for the last year and a half during our interim period to hold the church together, to keep us moving forward. I think that we're in such a great place right now. Uh, and so thank a member of the vestry or the staff when you see him or her at church on Sunday. So this is the prayer for the mission of the church. Ever living God, whose will it is that all should come to you through your son, Jesus Christ, inspire our witness to him that all may know the power of his forgiveness and the hope of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And a prayer for the parish. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And thank you, Wendy. Wendy says she is very grateful for the loving leadership of you all. As we say in our parish prayer, we ask to raise up leaders at this place. <laughs> and I guess that that is what God is doing, even those of us who are reluctant <laughs> leaders. So... A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth. And in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning for morning prayer here at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Tequesta, Florida. May you have a blessed day and weekend. And remember, as you go out into the world today, and greet your neighbor. Be kind to him or her. One never knows what another is going through in this world. Amen.